Hello, David Harper of Bionic Turtle with the third in a series on expected loss. And this formula for my FRM candidates, which is very important to credit risk and credit risk portfolios. We've said that expected loss is equal to the product of three components. And two of the components I've looked at yesterday and the day before. Adjusted exposure, expected default frequency, that's also known as probability of default, and finally, loss given default that we'll look at now. Loss given default is equal to 1 minus the recovery rate. And so the idea is that when the obligor defaults on a bond or loan obligation, we expect probably to recover at least something more than zero. And that recovery is factored in to the formula for expected loss. For example, if the exposure is 1 million, and the probability of default is 1%, we could, let's say we're a bank, applying Basel II under the foundation approach, and the obligation refers to a senior corporate claim, we would use a loss given default of 45%. That means that 55% is the estimated recovery. And so on this exposure of one million, our expected loss is $4,500. Now let's go down the totem pulse, so to speak, and instead consider a subordinated or junior claim that is also unsecured under the Basel rules. The loss given default would be 75%, and now we only assume a 25% recovery, and the expected loss jumps up to $7,500. According to De Servigny, who is assigned for the FRM candidate, the key difference between a probability of default and a loss given default is that for the probability of default, we are okay to use a point estimate. That's what the 1% is. We're estimating a 1% probability of default. However, the loss given default is generally harder to parameterize. And according to De Servigny, we should use a distribution to acknowledge its random or stochastic nature. So the distribution here for the loss given default is really because we're much less certain about what the average value of the loss given default should be. And there are a few factors to explain this, but primarily in the research we see that loss given default is somewhat cyclical, that is sensitive to the macro economy. The average recovery rates are variable, that means their mean varies by seniority, industry, and the collateral amount collateral and type of collateral. And finally, they are volatile. So this is the most important justification for the use of a distribution on the loss given default. And that is when we look at the statistics, they have high standard deviations or high dispersions. So now let me show you in Excel the beta distribution that is the most typical among the credit risk models that is used to model loss given default. Here are two distributions that are both beta distributions to illustrate. First notice that the distributions are bounded here by 0 and 1 on the x-axis, which plots the recovery rate. Again, that's 1 minus the loss given default. We start at 0% and go up to 100% because we recover either nothing or everything or something in between. So the beta can be bounded at 0 and 1. That's a helpful feature. And the other helpful feature of the beta, in addition to its flexibility, is that we only need the two parameters, alpha and beta. Alpha is also called the center and gives us the steepness of the hump. Beta is the shape and gives us the fatness of the tail. So for example, I have plugged in here to characterize the red distribution, which is a beta, an alpha of two and a beta of six. And you can see it has more density at the lower recoveries owing to its subordinated or junior nature. And it turns out that the mean of the beta distribution is easy to calculate. It's just the alpha, divided by the alpha plus the beta. And so in this case, 
I have a mean recovery of 25% or a mean loss given default of 75%, which corresponds to the Basel II foundation approach. Now, if I move over to the blue line with a senior uh, distribution that tries to characterize a senior claim, I bumped up the alpha to four. That's to move the center over. I took the shape down. That's to give a fatter tail. And I ended up here with a mean recovery at 55%, which happens to correspond to a 45% loss given default, which matches the Basel II Foundation approach for a senior unsecured claim. So you can see, but these are both beta distributions, and this is the key advantage of the beta, is I've got flexibility here, but I've also got the ability to do wide dispersion with only two parameters and stay in the zero to one bounds. In conclusion for FRM candidates, what we've said is that the beta distribution is common in the credit risk portfolio models, and that's owing to its virtues that it is compact, only requires the two parameters. We can bound it at 0 and 100% because that describes what can happen in a recovery. And most importantly, it's flexible with by, by nature of us tweaking the alpha or center and beta or shape parameters. And it does have two drawbacks, which are related as noted by Dacer Vigny. It can only give us a unimodal, that's a single humped distribution, instead of a bimodal distribution that is oftentimes observed in actual recoveries. And related to this, if the distribution has point masses, that's density at both zero, which uh, is uh, no recovery, and 100%, which is ultimate recovery of everything, then that would be a bimodal distribution, and the beta can't handle that as well. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.